Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I've got some Battlefield Hardline Hotwire gameplay. This is gameplay of the new game mode that EA is showcasing, and it's actually a lot of fun. I was surprised because I really wasn't expecting much from it. I thought it was sort of the usual gimmicky game mode that EA adds to the new Battlefield games, and they usually kind of die out quickly. But this time around, I think Hotwire is actually going to be a fan favorite. The game mode itself is pretty easy to explain and learn, but I imagine the strategies are going to get fairly complex. Basically, it's like a game of conquest, however, instead of having flags, you have vehicles that are scattered throughout the map. Once you get into this vehicle, you have to speed up, attain a certain speed, and once you are traveling beyond this velocity, basically you will start generating points for having that point captured. If you go below that speed, the point will go back to being neutral and you won't generate points. So the whole idea is to get in a capture point, drive around very quickly, and you will generate a lot of points. Obviously the enemy team is going to try and stop you, but they're going to have to catch up to you in another vehicle or set booby traps along the road and wait for you. As you can imagine, this leads to a lot of pursuit style gameplay. Cops chasing criminals, criminals chasing cops, and so forth. There's a lot of crazy action to be had, and in just the limited time that I was able to play this game mode we actually had a ton of fun probably some of the most fun i've had in battlefield in a long time now all of this gameplay was captured at a two-day ea event a lot of youtubers and professional gamers were invited out to play the game sort of give their opinions and have some direct feedback with the developers about what we liked and didn't like we are not being paid to make these videos or asked to alter our opinions in any way. Now aside from Hotwire, we were allowed to play a lot of other game modes and maps in Hardline. In fact, I think we got to play every single map that is coming out in Hardline, and I'm pretty excited about them. I can't really give you too many specific details about them just yet, but I can say there is a very big variety of maps to be had. A lot of small maps with lots of destruction, a lot of large maps with very limited destruction. There's basically going to be a map out there for just about anybody. Now there's been a lot of changes made to the game since we've all played in Alpha and Beta. One of those main changes is the fact that LMGs and rocket launchers are no longer weapons that you can spawn with. They've been changed to basically be battlefield pickups or they spawn in the trunk of your car. Now I really wish I could talk about some of the discussions and the feedback sessions that we had with the developers because certainly issues were run into or balance questions were brought up and just part of our NDA is that we can't really discuss the specifics of what was discussed discussed behind closed doors if you will but I will say that I think the group of YouTubers there and professional gamers did a really good job of representing the community and probably what you guys would want for in, in a final product. So I'm pretty happy with the feedback that we gave. Hopefully a lot of it will actually be followed in the final release of the game. Uh, there weren't too many big, big issues, but there was enough to basically say, hey, you guys need to fix this. Hopefully that will get fixed for the final game. Uh, if you're watching closely also, you might have noticed at one point I reload the Chris Vector and I run into the reload bug. Big surprise, still in the game. For those of you not familiar with the reload bug, and that should be nobody at this point because I've probably made five videos covering the damn thing, there's a bug that originated in Battlefield 3. Basically, you hit the reload button, your gun reloads, uh, you take out a mag, put in a new mag, yet the ammo count of your weapon doesn't change. So if you only had three bullets left, you hit the reload button, pop out a mag, pop in a new mag, you're still gonna have three bullets left over. So this bug started in BF3, it made it into Medal of Honor Warfighter, because that was also using the Frostbite engine, made it into Battlefield 4, complained about it enough, never got fixed, and it looks like it's actually gonna make it into Battlefield Hardline. And this time around the bug occurred while I was playing at EA's headquarters, so it's not some sort of weird internet latency issue that I was specifically having at my house or something like this. A lot of people have had this bug, it's a stupid bug to have in a game. In my opinion, you can never make this game a competitive shooter as long as this bug still exists. And speak to the devil, here you go. Hit the reload button, reload the gun, and there's only five rounds left. Try and engage the next guy, shoot five bullets. Oh, what do you know? I gotta reload again. Anyway, enough of the silly bugs. Why don't we talk about some of the more interesting balance issues that might become a problem for this game? A lot of people are still suggesting that the operator is a bit of an overpowered class, especially now that it gets the spawn beacon. Granted, it does have to choose between, say, the spawn beacon and defibrillators or a med bag, but you're still giving it some very, very good gadgets. Then you look at something like the mechanic class, which has got some cool guns going for it, but granted, the uh, PDWs or the small guns, the SMGs, whatever you want to call them, 
column are still not really going to stand up to the assault rifles. So what else does the mechanic have going for it? It doesn't have rocket launchers anymore because those are battlefield pickups. It does have a grenade launcher, which isn't bad, but it's not that great overall. So it's got a repair torch, which is good for repairing vehicles. However, you're not really going to be doing a lot of repairing vehicles in this game because you're driving cars. Most of the time, you really just can't repair the car because it's damaged so much that it's about to explode anyway. So you're not really going to be using the blowtorch too much. So unfortunately, the mechanic doesn't have a lot going for it. This was an issue that we did bring up and discussed a lot of interesting issues with the developers, but again, I can't really talk about too much of the feedback sessions. It's actually a question that I would like to pose to you guys. What do you think can be done about the mechanic class? How do we balance it out now that it no longer has the rocket launcher and really serves such an important role for taking out vehicles, since most vehicles can be taken out with small arms fire? doesn't really have the most powerful guns in the game. It's got some good ones for CQB, but as we know from any Battlefield game in the past, a good medium range to long range or hybrid weapon is probably still going to be king of the hill at the end of the day. One of my favorite things in Hardline is the fact that they've divided the sidearms up between classes. So if you're a huge fan of, say, the 44 Magnum, well, you're going to have to play the mechanic class to use that. If you want to use something like your classic M9, you're going to have to play the operator. If you want to play any sort of full auto pistols or or even the uh, Mac 10, you're gonna have to play as the professional and inevitably you're gonna be switching between classes during games. So you're gonna have to switch between a lot of different sidearms. So it's a nice way to kind of force people into using different guns all the time rather than just getting comfortable with their favorite sidearm and their favorite primary. Now during the public beta for this game, a lot of people were making comments about just the character classes, how they looked a little bit stiff and uninteresting. I have to say that they've done a pretty good job at redesigning a lot of the characters here. There's also going to be a bunch of different weapon skins for each class so kind of like in Counter-Strike where you could pick a bunch of different skins for your soldier you should be able to pick a bunch of different skins just for the same type of player and this is cool it adds a bit of customization to the game that I think Battlefield has so desperately needed. Visceral's also been able to have a lot of fun with the weapon selection, choosing from some very old classics to some very interesting new sidearms. As a Cops and Criminals game, you can essentially assume that the criminals are getting access to anything that they can get their hands on, or if you have a lot of money, you can definitely buy some of the more high-tech, more high-end weapons. So it's just a very interesting variety of weaponry in combat, and I'm actually really liking that about the game. Also, the maps change in theme very drastically. So not everything feels like it's an actual battlefield, no pun intended there, but you feel like you're fighting in neighborhoods or slums or downtown LA, and it's just a nice change up from your usual battlefield just crazy fighting in the desert or fighting in the jungle type scenario. Anyway, if there's one idea or sentiment I could leave you guys with now that I've played the game a lot, sure, there's a little bit of work that needs to be done on this game before it's at its full potential. That being said, I am very hopeful hopeful for this game, much more hopeful than I have been in the past. So as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.